<laughs> We're quickly on to the man, the boy, the legend, uh, Connor Bradley. I mean, let's do it. I, I, a star is born, Dan. I, I nearly it did is. it two it or is. three times already. Like I said it earlier, I tweeted it earlier, and like this is Connor Bradley's world. We're all just living in it essentially at this point. Like what a performance! Like again. We've seen glimpses, we've seen cameos, we've seen starts in more recent weeks whereby you go, you go, okay, this kid looks like he's got absolutely everything. And we touched on it in the uh, the Umber earlier on. It was like, yeah, but this is another, it should have been another step up in class in terms of what he's coming up against. It should have been another challenge. And yeah. now he's looking over his shoulder. He's seeing Trent Alexander-Arnold back fit, probably available for tonight, you'd say. But Conor Bradley's got the nod again. Whether Trent could have played 90 is a different story, but Conor Bradley's been given that trust, that willingness from Klopp to say, no, I'm still backing you. You're the, you're the hot hand. Let's do it. And he has repaid that faith and some because I'm struggling. We spoke earlier on about how brilliant Liverpool were all round. I don't remember many all round performance is quite as good as this. And listen, that might be a, a reaction because we're 15 minutes removed from absolute twat in Chelsea for one. But honestly, like from a defensive standpoint, from an attacking standpoint, it was just immaculate, absolutely immaculate. We spoke about his anticipation on the weekend, but there was a moment tonight whereby he goes one on one with Mudrich. And, you know, you can say what you want about Mudrick, but he's an attacking winger who tries to go past people. Conor Bradley has none of it. Just steps in front of him, Doesn't no, not it. a chance. And it's the quality, he gets two assists, the second of which is just ridiculous. The goal is right out the top draw. Yeah. Like, that's a finish of, like, a seasoned veteran striker. Seen Fowler. We've seen yeah. Fowler buried not, him like that. Not a 20-year-old I mean? right-back just no. making his way. It's, uh, it's As performances go, Evel, it's up there with the best I've seen for a while. Yeah, it was. It was it was flawless. It was an absolutely flawless performance, and that young lad should be so proud of him, his family, everybody, the, the backroom staff, everybody that helped get him to where he was tonight should be really proud of the impact that they've had on that young boy's life because... Ultimately, he said to himself, he's living the dream, and he's you know one of the select few lucky people that ever get this this close this far to break out of an academy at, at any level to make it into a Premier League side. That's that's been hard yards, blood, sweat, and tears. That's pure grit and pure determination. And you know, you know, you might think the the the, the hardest part is, is getting in and breaking in. No nailing it down and mm. keeping it is going to be the hardest part now for him. And he, he's got the potential, and the, it looks like he's got the appetite yes. to want to keep it because there's a place. There is a place that it's become available, and again, it's not necessarily a, a here and now situation. But we spoke uh, briefly on it last on, on the weekend, where whereby you know a new manager is going to want to come in in these next couple of months on an audition mm -hmm. because we know what the evolution of Trent should look like, but. Does the manager that come in go, right, well, I've seen so-and-so that plays over there that I want to come in and be my right back if Trent goes? No, the manager should want to think, I can use you. Yeah. There's something in you. And not just because you, you'll do and, you know, we'll use you as a backup. No, I can use you because you've got it. Mm -hmm. And he has got that if factor for me because it's the, it's the tenacity, it's the reading of the game, it's the energy that he brings. And I know, of course, a young lad should have those energy levels, but it's just how complete and in control and composed he looks. Some of the touches that he gets, because he, you know, or whoever's on that right hand side for us, offering us that width, always receives a lot of big sweeping diagonal yep. balls. And some of the, they're accurate, but you've still got to kill them dead to make something happen thereafter. Often under pressure as well. Yeah. And more often than not, instant, instant mm. control and instant straight away front foot. This is what we need to do now to get us going. And he's got that in abundance. And it's, Again, it's that that wanton desire to really cause other teams problems because it's like having two wingers. Mm. And yeah. you, for that sake, for his goal especially, he gets it just after the halfway line. So there is acres of space to run into. Mm -hmm. But at that moment in time, it's Sterling's job to go back with him. <laughs> Sterling's not slow. No. He's not. He's, he's not a slug. But he didn't want any of it. No. He didn't want any <laughs> of it. But Bradley just left him for dead. And and it was just telling, and that's an ex, that's a season experience. Raheem Sterling, that's been there, done it, won it, won it all, apart mm -hmm. from the Champions League. We mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like from that perspective, you've got to sit there and look at it and think, Do you know what? Respectfully, there's a young lad in in Conor Bradley at the moment that has got the world at his feet because. Yeah. He has got the potential to go on to do magnificent things. It's just how we harness that ability now and how we find the moments 
from between now and the end of the season mm -hmm. to give him the best opportunities on the pitch to continue to deliver because I think it was uh, Steve saying everything that he's done right now has been a net positive to this team yeah. every time he's been called upon he's not let cop down you said that then he's repaid him and mm -hmm. then some yeah. it's about continuing that now yeah. and not getting too carried away with top and he doesn't seem to strike me he doesn't seem like he's got that no. personality in him at the moment it's again just harnessing all of those qualities because We've seen players come through and you're like, oh, I'd just refine this or I'd, mm -hmm. I'd tweak that and I'd tweak that. But for the right, for the full-back game, like you said, that performance today was flawless. Mm. But he hasn't put the foot wrong no. since coming in. So it's like, who does he have to be? Does he have to be up against Mbappé before he starts looking at his level? Yeah, or, yeah, or the level yeah. we think he should, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, he he's playing ahead of his years. I don't know. He's like, I've been really hyperbolic. Mbappé's the, the best winger. But... There's got to be wingers out there that you think, oh, right now. Well, the, 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 the... He shut down Martinelli in, in that cameo. Yeah, he shut it, him it down, was, it was yeah. A, him and Beck, was it? Yeah. Oh, who's the other one? Um, was it Beck, it wasn't... Beck, come on, I can't remember Beck. No, it was, on, the yeah. other, it was the other young lad. McConnell played the other yeah, day. No, it wasn't McConnell. It yeah. was, I think it might have been Beck then. Yeah, I mean, it was the two of them. They yeah. both come in and done a job, didn't they? Uh, Bobby Clark like, came oh, Clark, on. Yeah, Bobby yeah, Clark yeah, sorry, it was. But they both shut it down. And again, he was a part of that. And... You know, Sterling, tricky customer. I mm. thought today, I thought if that was going to be, especially after that first run where he, he was in for, if there's going to be any trouble, it's yeah. going to be down that side because they should think that there's confidence. Oh, he's only, who's, who's Bradley type of vibe. Mm. And footballers have got that ego. That's what get, gets them so far yeah, in the course. game. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have a little bit of ego and self-belief. Yeah. But Bradley just took a soul. Literally just took a <laughs> soul, man. It was it was scary. It was, it was fine. I said it earlier on, like he epitomised everything that was good about Liverpool today. That feral, that relentlessness, the quality to go with it as well. But as ever, I asked our Discord for them and the match. I say that, I actually said, do I need to ask for man the match, everyone? Um, and unsurprisingly, a lot of them went with kind of badly. Do you know um, what is, is mad as well? I, I know this is a really big statement and I could be way off the mark. I'm but I, I genuinely think that might be one of Klopp's proudest like moments oh, yeah. as manager. Just, it. just no, be just like to where everything's come to and to, yeah. to be giving somebody else another chance just yeah. before he's about to dip out and then see that young lad now just grab it with both hands. They, they're the wins as a that. manager. That he, do you know what I mean? Like if I, if I think I know Klopp as well as I, I'd like to hope. Yeah. They're the little wins there where he probably thinks. Go on, lad. Well, be, you go yeah, on, you lad. tell that with the actions of the goal as well but you're right especially when he does have Trent back because it's almost a vindication or a justification of his decision not that he needs that by the way because he doesn't he can sense do what he wants he could play Louis Diaz in goal against Arsenal and I'd be like okay I'd, I'd, it's, it's rascal but yeah, <laughs> yeah let's, let's, let's go see what happens yeah, yeah. but like yeah you're right because he could have easily gone with Trent even if there were question marks about him doing 19 and he shifts Joe Gomez over and he brings Robber one but no kind of badly been brilliant so let's go with Connor Bradley yeah. and I wouldn't have done I'll be honest I was I was one of the ones saying oh this is a little bit risky but I was wrong it yeah. was fucking superb and, and when you deep it now you think to yourself I remember a couple of years ago Trent was the, the, the one obviously there was a couple of us on, on the um, on the fringes but like there must have been on an interview with Klopp at the time and he's been like I'd love it, an 11 of Scousers. Mm, like, yeah, I'd love it. Yeah. And it's not like we've got an 11 of Scousers, but if he leaves us where there's Besetich, Curtis Jones, Bradley, mm -hmm. Trent, mm -hmm. Kelleher. Yeah. You've got Clark in the round, you've got McConnells, you've got um, there's, Harvey Elliott. Oh, got Harvey Kay, Elliott, yeah. Joe. So there's. Yeah. there's Quanta. Quanta, yeah. There's, there's seven or eight players arguably there. Mm -hmm that he mission accomplished almost i've brought seven players from your academy it's taken eight years but there are now seven players that have come out of your academy that are the standard of jürgen klopp and i i i breed world-class football players if it was like a racehorse and you're the you're the jockey in the chain and you breed world-class horses yeah. klopp's now turned seven or eight kids from in and around merseyside over the last seven and eight years into world-class prospects yeah. and i don't think that is hyperbolic in me saying that at this moment in time not on the evidence we've seen and if no. you was to then take that away on the evidence and say wow you they, as i say again they're the things that i think from him the intangibles that he probably thinks you know what you can spend all the money in the world you can have all the budgets in the world but if i got to do that year in year out that's why i got into management 
he's a football football man and he, and he often spoke about doing it our way and doing it a different way and that's been in the transfer market at times as well but I do think we're seeing that the fruits of the labour in terms of the academy this season especially like it's been a high, one of the highlights one of the many highlights of the season so far for me and just a few people of course give us Connor Bradley um, how do it's David drunken fumble um, Abe says it's just Bradley Ashley Frith says only one Connor Bradley John P says no we don't we all know M's Bradley um, why ask the question George you know the answer to from Hitching Bars yeah nice Tom Little says Macca should win the second Man the Match award because he doesn't stand a chance at Man the Match no you're right um, da, 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 this John P Stevie Wonder saw who Man the Match was that's nice um, Cam Macca again the non Connor Bradley Man the Match I quite like that sad Cool, kind of badly. Boss, super. Well done, my mate. Let's move on then. Um, unfortunately, we have to. Ibu Canate. We didn't even number kind of badly after all that. 10? Is that a 10? It's a 10. First 10. The first time I'm happy to give as well, by the way. Never been happy, but you know what? It is performances. As far as performances go. I don't go. think it gets much better. From a performance, it doesn't. You know, you're playing a right back, bro. You've just scored a goal and you've provided two assists and a four-one win over Chelsia, Kids who are historically the fucking. We're moving on. Come on, bro. It's Come a, on, it's bro. a ten. What are we doing? What are we doing out here? If we can't be fans and give players tens, man, come on, that's our job. 